you won't actually believe when you see the meta for the melee in Mythic Plus. Of course, it's a new week, kind of a new week with new affixes and things kind of change up a bit. However, this time around, when it comes to damage, to key level, to survivability, things have changed quite a bit since last time and uh, it's looking like one of the best meta we've ever had for Mythic Plus when it comes to melee DPS, so let's see why. And we can start with Arms Warrior, which is probably one of the biggest up and coming specs that we've had today. And I'm going to put Arms all the way into R tier. Dude, Arms is giga good right now. We had a bunch of buffs a couple of weeks ago and maybe they're just showing up now. However, Arms has always done really, really good. Probably maybe where it struggled the most might have been single target, but right now, even with everything considered, ARMS is doing actually really well, and you can even look at this particular log of a, I think it was a 28 Everbloom, and ARMS is doing pretty well, like this dude essentially got a 100 percentile parse and it's still a little bit behind Havoc, however, the damage is really good, the tankiness is really good, probably not as much as Fury, but we will get to that in a second, however, if you pick up arms right now, it's great because I actually played arms as well and I was surprised how much damage I was doing with arms. And arms was a learning process for sure. Something I was able to get through easier with today's sponsor, Outplayed. Outplayed is a game recording software that lets you capture your gameplay. Not only that, it was helpful in helping me understand what I did right and wrong in this particular fight with arms where I noticed I could have used a few more executes. Once you record your gameplay, you can use Outplay's editor to go back on your dungeon and analyze your rotation to find little things to improve. Get Outplay for free by clicking the link below while supporting the Marcellian Online team in the process. Thanks Outplay for sponsoring this video, now let's check out Assassination. Assassination has had a rougher climb than most other specs, however, that's not gonna hold it back because Assassination is in B tier. Now you might think that nah, assassination B tier that's still pretty low. Well, listen, I think the top assassination dude is also clearing plus 30 as of now. Not every assassination rogue is crushing it, of course. Probably the best rogues in the world are still playing outline. We will see in a second why. But assassination is actually doing insane damage and clearing very, very high keys. Just a slight bit below, if you look at the top 10 assassination, a slight bit below arms from what the arms are doing and obviously the other specs in S and A tier, but Assassination is my main and a spec that has incredible priority damage. Pretty much its entire damage profile is priority damage, which is something that probably starts to become more and more relevant the higher you go into keys. And although I cannot speak for all of the Assassination rogues that are pushing 29s, 30s, 31s, since Assassination actually ends up to be one of the squishier rogue specs, you are running Elusiveness or you are advised to run Elusiveness, turning Fate into a much bigger defensive cooldown, potentially increasing the tankiness of the spec as well with, uh, you know, the sacrifice of cheat death, of course. Now, I don't know if that's what's keeping Assassination rogues alive in the 29s and 30s, but they are alive to clear keys and we're likely going to see bigger and bigger keys as we go to the end of the season with Assassination, while Outlaw retains its king spot the absolute best melee spec in the game depending on what you look at by quite a bit to be fair it is pretty close with the other s tier specs as well however if you look at stuff like warcraft logs you see pretty much ahead but i try to not base these tier lists on warcraft logs since those can be sketchy i mean pretty much at the end of the day anything can be a little bit sketchy when it comes to ranking specs but when you look at, for instance, like Radar.io at the top Outlaw specs, you can see them clearing the highest keys in the game. Likely, although a little bit of a tangent, not as high as the range DPS specs because the top comps seemingly have, what is it now? Shadow Priest, Boomkins, Fire Mages, stuff like that, and Augmentation Evokers. So melee specs are kind of like one key below the top range. But in terms of just pure melee ranking, Outlaw takes the cake as the best one. Survival is actually not doing too shabby either, and it's still kind of like a B tier spec. It is clearing decent amount of keys, this decently high keys, and I probably suspect that the biggest issue survival hunters will have is actually, <laughs> ironically, surviving the incoming damage that they take, because if we look at some of the best keys cleared by some of the best players in their own respective spec they're all doing very very high damage very close to each other like we've seen with the arms example earlier today 
So damage is most likely not a problem now. Like damage is eventually going to become a problem with infinitely scaling content. But as of now, survivability is probably the biggest issue that people consistently face while going into higher and higher keys. And that's definitely going to affect hunters as being one of the squishiest classes in the game period. Survival hunter not being an exception in this case, which is a shame. But hey, at least your damage is going to be good. A-OK. -okay. Moving into enhancement, still a really good spec, surprisingly uh, not S tier anymore, but is A tier. And this is probably the same reason, as I mentioned, for survival. Shaman is also one of the squishier specs in the game right now, which is probably the biggest reason why enhancement doesn't see any S tier play. Because, you know, if you're not running a mage and you're not running an augmentation, because for some reason, I don't know, maybe you don't want to run those. A shaman can be another good source of bloodlust and enhancement could be the melee bloodlust that you always wanted. The damage that it has is crazy and I think it has been dubbed, if not still is, the king in funnel and priority damage and that's definitely what we need with the way that the dungeon pool is today, specifically dungeons like, I don't know, Rise or Everbloom with those abominations being very difficult to clear. Enhancement does really well, but then again, it's still... Squishy. It's not as squishy as arms though, which is weird. So we are seeing enhancement clearing higher and higher, but it probably has bigger damage than arms, period. Plus definitely has better priority damage than arms, which is, I would imagine, why it's there. Plus the utility that enhancement brings to the group as a shaman is much better than warrior. Unfortunately, warriors still suck in that department. Kind of similarly, but not really, feral is also... A weird one in terms of bringing utility to the class. Why is this mouse not working? The mouse is uh, dying. Marcellian, you gotta change your mouse, man. Feral is still B tier. Now, B tier is the tier where you see people clearing 29s, 28s, maybe a 30 here and there, depending on the spec. But Feral is kind of the weakest version of the melee so far. The weakest one so far. We'll see oh, by the time we get to the end of the tier list. However... Depending on when you watch this tier list, MDI might have already started, although it sh this tier list should come before MDI starts as well. There's a lot of rumors going around that Feral is going to be one of the better melees to pick for MDI. Now, you see that and you might think, oh, why is Flame ranking Feral in B tier? Well, MDI is not the same as pushing high keys since MDI usually does way lower keys. And in this case, Feral is probably struggling a little bit more in the higher echelon of things with Mm, probably it's damage a little bit considering, you know, what it has to go up against, but also its survivability. Might not be the squishiest one in the bunch, but it, Druid is no stranger to being squishy all around. <laughs> Nobody's going bear form, so just get over it, okay? A big, big surprise has actually been Frost Decay. I fully expected to see Frost Decay at the bottom of the tier, but it's actually leading the B tier, probably close to A tier. Like, I think the rank 1 Frost DK right now is doing, uh, has cleared a 30, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and it's probably even higher by the time you watch this or, you know, as, as the weeks go on. Which is very, very surprising. I think it's the only spec in B tier that has cleared 30s. And considering that Frost DK has been consistently at the bottom of this tier list with the assassination for the longest time for pretty much the entirety of Dragonflight, almost. Yeah, almost. This is really good, it's really good news. Specs are just picking up steam and Frost Decay is maybe one of the best examples as a very bottom feed, bottom of the barrel spec, actually being B tier. Now B tier once again is, or are rather, specs that are clearing pretty high keys right now in the range of 28 to 29s. Some of them a little bit more, some of them a little bit less, but usually very, very good. DK is always gonna be a really decent spec in terms of keys because it has a lot of defensives and obviously survivability has been a consistent issue that we've talked about. DKs are usually on the tankier side and speaking of tanky, Fury Warrior is maybe one of the tankiest melees, kind of contending with Rogue a little bit. Now this is a little bit harder to place because the top Fury Warriors are clearing keys very close to Outlaw level but that's only like a handful of warriors. Not all of them are clearing and not as consistently. So I really want to put it into S tier, but I think the safest bet right now is for it to be A tier, which is very weird because if you look at rankings like sub creation, we see Fury Warrior still a little bit below some of the top tier specs, 
Sub Christian is ranking the B tier, but we're not using that type of ranking. However, it is really good. On Warcraft Logs, it's actually lower than Arms Warrior for some reason. Maybe it's just the last week. Arms have been pumping. Uh, but in terms of the Warrior kit, Fury is the better spec in terms of defensives. And in terms of utility, I guess it's kind of the same as Arms, unless you just want that Die by the Sword taunt to survive, which is kind of the only thing that Fury cannot do while Arms can. But overall, it's really good DPS spec. It's still kind of capped in AoE, but it retains a lot of its consistency over into boss damage. Obviously, since you're kind of capped in AoE in small packs and in dangerous dungeons, they're probably going to be really good because people don't pull as much. But uh, that's probably where we're going to see Fury right now. I wouldn't be surprised if in a week or two time, we're going to see Fury rank all the way into Asia. But that depends on what the other S tier specs are going to be doing. And speaking of... Havoc Demon Hunter is definitely another S tier spec. Now, once again, depending on who you ask, Havoc is going to be better or worse than Outlaw or quite at a big distance from Outlaw, at least uh, when it comes to Warcraft logs, which is once again, why I don't particularly like to use those as a metric to actually make any important decisions when I rank these specs, but mostly because Havoc just does a lot of damage no matter where you look and who you talk to, man. Plus, the utility that it brings to the party is very unique, especially if your tank is not a Vengeance. If you're pushing the high keys, you're usually either using a Vengeance Demon Hunter or a Prod Paladin. Vengeance is probably universally agreed upon to be the better tank. However, Prod Paladin, it's giving it a run for its money with AoE sounds and all other things, but we're not going to be talking about tanks. But if you have a Prod Paladin or not a Vengeance Demon Hunter, you probably really want to have it in those very high keys for you know the buff is really nice plus if you're running casters it's gonna be really good darkness is really good in cap is really good you have a lot of utility and you're very 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 tanky which definitely helps getting into that s tier ranking now we will go to red paladin and if you remember, about 7 minutes ago, I did mention that uh, ARMS or Frost Decay or both of them have been some of the underdogs that have uh, risen above uh, their status and have proven them to be incredibly surprising in their performance. Now, with the Giga buffs that Red has had, Red has climbed all the way into S tier, baby! Dude, when was the last time Red has achieved S tier status in Mythic Plus. It was really good when it was just reworked, but it never really quite caught the S tier bug. Maybe like one week before people start to figure things out. But Red is legitimately pushing with the biggest of the bunch right now. 31s and 30s. Really, really good. Especially if you don't have a Protection Paladin, you know, kind of the counter argument with Havoc, and you do have a Vengeance. You kind of really want some bobs for some of those dangerous bleed. Sacrifice is really good. The off heals are really good. Red being giga tanky also really helps when you don't have to worry about it. And with the increase in damage performance, Red is seeing... Jesus, this is actually really great. I've been wanting to see Red in S tier for years, dude. And now it's finally coming. Red Paladins, you have deserved this spot and don't listen to those haters going, oh my god, Red does so much damage, needs to be nerfed, oh my god, it's so easy. Listen, Reds have suffered for years being average, middle of the pack, the middle child, the ginger middle child, you know, the, the ones that you forget at the airport when you watch Home Alone, those were Reds essentially, but now they're kicking it and they're crushing it and I love to see it. Another surprising development has been Subtlety, which has been the worst performing rogue spec in Mythic Plus for the first part of this season. And now, obviously, it's not because I just said that, but it, not only that, it's <laughs> A tier. It's starting to actually clear 30s, but that's, you know, as of recording this video, there's one top Subtlety Rogue, Kushio or something like that, that's cleared like one or two 30s. I don't really see Subtlety catching up to Outlaw, but it did uh, overpass Subtlety and kind of with Frost Decay for the longest time, it's been the bottom of the barrel for Mythic Plus, but that just goes to show you that people didn't really give Subtlety the chance that it needed for it to kind of rise back up. And going from, I don't know what we had last time, C tier, D tier, all the way into S tier, close A tier, not S tier, but close to S tier, considering the level of keys that it's doing right now. That is very surprising and very, very nice. Congratulations, Subtlety Rogues. Here are some happy campers right about now. More 
surprises upon surprises. Where has Unholy been hiding? Because it's also cranking, man. Like, listen, there's probably something going on that I am not familiar with. But I'm looking at, you know, the top players of each spec and I'm seeing Unholy doing 30s and 31s. That would probably warrant it an S tier uh, ranking, but that's once again, that's only by very few unholies. Overall, unholy doesn't really clear as high as Outlaw and Red and Havoc yet, but it is a top, top contender for A tier. Once again, a spec that has been pretty meh so far this season, kind of meh last season as well, but the numbers is dishing out right now. What is it? Did, did unholies just get their legendaries? I don't know what's going on with unholy that's doing so much. But I'm glad to see Unholy back in the top ranking so far. And not only that, but in A tier. Who knows the new horizons that Unholy DKs can see across the board. But now I, I guess you're pretty happy because, you know, all the arguments that we had pro that went for the performance of Frost DK goes to Unholy as well. Unholy has always had more potential in Mythic Plus, let's say, than Frost DK due to how its AOE works. Probably a lot of its ramp has been holding it back over the seasons in terms of how we tested on Holy DKs, obviously at pleb level, but you know, or plebs with all specs. So, you know, if you combine all pleb specs into one juicy pleb juice of soup, you get uh, the average Marcelin line performance. However, even with all of that, on Holy has been doing really good damage, which kind of always surprised me why overall its performance has been low, but maybe people have just, you know, unscrewed the tap and now the water is just flowing out and unholy is a tier enough said well we know that windwalker is really good because it has gotten buffs a little bit before all of these underdogs coming up uh, below and now it's still really good it's not s tier but it is a tier and ironically enough one of the best single target melee specs in the game at least from what we've seen and, um, and at least from what we've uh, done with our own Windwalkers. Is the meme dead? Is it gone now? Is Windwalker actually legit good in single target? I mean, it's looking good on the meters and overall it's still a very good spec in terms of performance. I want to say surprisingly tanky. I've been watching some of the top players play their melees in their 30s and uh, Windwalker doesn't really topple over that easy. Now, I know it hasn't been a historically tanky spec, but that's kind of, you know, besides the point because the utility that it brings is really good. And considering that Brewmaster has taken a dip and people really like Mistweaver, but in the highest and highest of keys, I still think like Resto Druids, Discipline Priests, maybe Holy Paladins are probably seeing more play than Mistweavers. You're probably going to go to Windwalker as your first monk pick of choice for that, you know, physical damage debuff and all of the monk goodness that you have. Considering that the best melee in the game is Outlaw, I wouldn't be too surprised to see more Windwalkers maybe being paired with Outlaw to get that juicy physical damage out of the out of the way. And it's been a while since we've seen a tier list ranking like this. No specs into C tier and D tier. I did consider, I always like to like spread them as much as possible to fill out the tier list as much as possible to be as interesting as possible. But they're so close to each other that I just couldn't really do it. Which I guess that speaks volumes for how good the balance is. There's always going to be outliers, I know, I know, and Outlaw is a cry above half Feral for sure, but considering that the key levels that they're doing, uh, you know, close to each other are very close, probably because we've had some pretty easy weeks pushing keys in the last month-ish, we're probably seeing this rise. Likely, this is not going to last for very long, we'll see after MDI starts how the ranking will shape up, but for now, if you love the S-tier specs, you're in luck because we already have a video on Outlaw and why Outlaw is so good. If you ever thought that maybe you want to play one of those top tier meta specs and see what the fuss is all about, you gotta check out Outlaw right now, right here by clicking the video. Click it right now. Bye-bye.